Hello and welcome to another episode of Thick Slices and Deep Cuts. Uh, today uh, I'll be ranking the uh, albums of the band Death. So the seven album discography of Chuck Schuldiner and Company. Um, all I have, usually I put a lot of stuff up, all I have of Death as far as like things other than CDs uh, is this old tattered shirt from their first album. I used to have a human shirt but it got torn to shreds over the years. So. That's the one thing I still have after all these years. Um, but uh, just a brief history that probably most people watching will already know, but the uh, band is basically Chuck Schuldiner and company. Obviously, the late Chuck Schuldiner, who, uh, who left us way too early back in uh, 2001. Uh, but he did leave us with quite the, uh, the legacy. So these seven albums, uh, regardless of where I rank them, I like them all very much. So even though the one I'm going to rank here seven, as I go from seven to one, even the one I rank seventh, I like, and I like them all a lot. So, uh, just incredible to see. Uh, you know, this is probably one of the most influential bands on me personally. You know, I think a lot of people say, "Oh, well, you know, Jimmy Page or somebody like that meant so much to me." Well, call me odd, but for me, you know, Chuck Schuldiner was one of the pivotal people for me to, you know, want to play. You know. You know, just get better, play more technical, more creative, all those things, progressive, I guess, all those types of things while, while playing in a more extreme, faster fashion. So, um, anyway, interesting to watch the, the creative uh, trajectory of, of Chuck and company over the years. Uh, so, I'll go ahead and start ranking the albums. Um, all these came out between the years of 1987 and 1998. Um, so, all right, we'll get right into it. Uh, coming in at number seven, uh, an excellent album. But uh, something had to come in last, and that would be 1998's The Sound of Perseverance, um, the final album of Chuck and, uh, and Death. Excellent album. Super technical. You know, if you like, if you like Death, uh, very progressive and technical, you'll dig this. Um, first track might be the best one. Scavenger of Human Sorrow, a Spirit Crusher, Flesh and the Power It Holds. Um, it's even a, like a mellow instrumental with acoustic guitar. I don't think he'd done anything like that up to this point. Um, I dig this album. I just I came on board with the band at a different time. I've talked to people that are like five or ten years younger than me, and they point to this as their favorite album. And I can understand that. It's well done. It's super technical. Um, you know, I just it doesn't connect with me on the level that the other six do. Not that it doesn't connect with me. It just doesn't. You know, um, there was a three-year gap between the previous album and this one, so it was almost like he had kind of moved on from death. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but maybe nuclear. This is on Nuclear Blast. I think maybe somebody kind of, you know, convinced him to do one more album. So, uh, and as with all death albums, this is a different lineup. So he never had the same lineup twice. Never had the same lineup in back-to-back -back albums. This is a completely new lineup. None of these guys were on any of the previous albums. And there were always notable players in his band. Uh, in this instance, the most notable would be Richard Christie on drums, simply because he was on the Howard Stern Show for years, and um, I think he also played in um, Iced Earth for a short time after this, and also uh, Control Denied, which was Chuck's other band that he was working on right around this time, uh, which was, I don't know what you call it, Progressive Power Metal or something like that. but. Uh, this album is good. You know, I, I think what Scott Clendenin is on bass, I'd never heard of him before or since uh, on this album. Uh, Shannon Ham was the other guitar player. Again, never heard of those two guys. Knew about Richard Christie, but, uh, you know, excellent album. Just something had to come in at number seven, so this is by no means a bad album. It's just, uh, also, I guess one thing that did get to me, his vocals, or Chuck's vocals at this point are so high-pitched, they're kind of... It's my least favorite Chuck vocal performance. I guess we'll, we'll we'll say that as far as a critique. But otherwise, it's a good album, and they're. It sounds a bit like the, the album before it as far as style, but it's also got the technicality of the one, two albums before it. So it's good. Coming in at number seven, the sound of perseverance. Okay, uh, coming in at number six, a classic in the genre could be some old schoolers number one, but I had to put this together. Um, Number six is their debut, Scream Bloody Gore from 1987. Just a killer album. It's got 12 songs. Um, everything's based around like horror movies and 
Uh, this is just a landmark. This is like a blueprint for the death metal genre. You know, uh, it's really just a two-piece band at this point. It's Chuck and his ideas, and he's got Chris, who uh, Chris Reefer, who ended up being the drummer for Autopsy. So that's this lineup. It's basically a two-piece lineup, um, but that's a notable drummer that he has here. Um, you know, the songs are already legit. This isn't like some like. You know, like the first Carcass album was really rough or something like that, or some bands have a really rough start. There's nothing rough about this first album. Um, you've got, you know, Infernal Death, Zombie Ritual, uh, Mutilation, Baptized in Blood, all these good songs. You know, Evil Dead, I'm sure, was taken straight from that horror movie. You know, Beyond the Unholy Grave. Just everything is based around that horror movie vibe. And already certain elements of the death sound that would carry on throughout are already in place here. Um, and you can already tell that even though it's crazy horror movie lyrics, you can tell that the drummer's good and you can tell Chuck already knows what he's doing. Uh, so this is a, just a monstrous album. You know, you could argue this is their heaviest album. Uh, again, I dig it. This just speaks to how strong the death catalog is. That This blueprint landmark death metal classic from all the way in, back in 1987 is coming in at 6 out of 7. Uh, okay, coming in at number five, uh, the other death metal blueprint. In fact, he has Chuck and Death have many death metal blueprint albums, but uh, number five is their second album from 1988, uh, Leprosy. Uh, again, I dig this album. Uh, another lineup, this time the lineup uh, features three quarters of what would become Massacre, if you know that From Beyond album. Uh, so you've got uh, Bill Andrews on drums, you've got uh, Rick Ross on on guitar as well, and then you've got Terry Butler on bass, although I heard that Chuck did the bass for the recording, but basically you've got, other than Cam Lee, you've got the entire Massacre band uh, with Chuck for this album. Again, this is a total death metal blueprint from 1988. The second, you know, the second classic from death, and it's 1988, most of the death metal bands haven't even put out their first album, and he's already got two classics under his belt, but, you know, Title track, Leprosy, Left to Die, Pull the Plug, Open Casket, you know, just it ends with Choke on it. I mean, and also on this one, um, he's at Morris Sound Studios. Scott Burns, this is an early, early Scott Burns uh, engineering effort uh, at Morris Sound. Uh, and, the, you know, for what this is, for 1988 and being death metal, it's very clear. You can hear everything that's going on. And also, Chuck's compositions at this point are really good. The songs are getting a little bit longer, but everything makes sense, and all the riffs hook into, uh, you know, the compositions on here are very strong. So just a, you know, it, just, just the band death is just totally evolving. And just in the 80s alone, you've got these two masterpiece albums that influence so many. Uh, in fact, I was listening to, uh, I think it was Morgoth, um, I was listening to early Morgoth and I just could have sworn they just basically used these two albums as the blueprint for the early Morgoth sound. They sound just like these two. Um, so there you have it. At number five, another classic, Leprosy. Okay. Coming in at number four, and these last four were really the four that I really uh, cut my teeth on back in the day. Um, you know, I, I'd heard everything and I eventually got everything, but in the day, in the early to mid-90s, these last four were the ones that I had memorized and just swore by. So coming in at number four, uh, their third album from 1990, you have Spiritual Healing. Uh, this album is killer. Uh, so at this point, Rick Ross has left the band, so you still have Bill Andrews and Terry Butler from the Leprosy album who would go on to for Massacre, or at least be a Massacre for their uh, debut. But this time you've got James Murphy, the legendary death metal shredder guitar hero. James Murphy is the second guitar player. Um, uh, again, you're at Morris Sound with Scotty Burns. This album just evolves the band. This is what I would call their first progressive album. You know, these songs are getting more sophisticated. Uh, instead of the leprosy and scream bloody gore sort of horror uh, lyrics, you've got songs like Altering the Future, uh, Living Monstrosity, Defensive Personalities Within the Mind, Spiritual Healing, you know, Genetic Reconstruction. So you've got this new sort of more thought 
thought-provoking uh, lyrical uh, concepts. Uh, you know, spiritual healing, I think, is about eight minutes long. So the compositions just keep getting better, more technical, more, you know, more progressive. They're just, the the skill set of Chuck is just, you know, evolving at a pretty quick rate uh, at this point. I also think, in my opinion, this is their most overlooked and underappreciated album. I think everybody thinks the first two are classics, and I think everybody thinks the stuff, you know, after this is just like, wow, so advanced and technical and you know, high profile players all over the place. But, and I think this gets forgetting. This is really the bridge between, it's literally the bridge between the early classics and what they would become throughout the 90s. Uh, so I just think this is maybe their most overlooked classic. But I love it. Spiritual Healing coming in uh, at number four. Okay. Coming in at number three. An absolute classic from 1993. This was their fifth album overall. Uh, I have individual thought patterns. Uh, so check out th check out this high profile lineup. Uh, you've got Gene Hoagland on drums, going absolutely technically insane on this. You've got Steve DiGiorgio uh, back in the band with his fretless bass. And unlike the album before this, which he played on, where he was buried, uh, a la Injustice for All. Uh, they more than make up for it by cranking his fretless bass on this, so he's just playing this crazy, like, rubber band sounding technical bass throughout, uh, while Chuck is just, you know, he's in his prime here as far as just being creative. So Chuck's doing all kinds of cool things, tempo changes, which Gene's got under control, and Steve's just all over the place. Uh, and on top of that, they have a guest uh, lead player on here, Andy LaRock from King Diamond. So. This, you can argue, this is the most high-profile lineup he had. Uh, songs like Overactive Imagination, In Human Form, Trapped in a Corner, uh, Destiny, Out of Touch, uh, The Philosopher, which they had an MTV video for. Believe it or not, this band had at least a couple of videos I saw in Headbangers Ball back in the day. So, this album, if you like your music just super teched out, uh, this might be that album for you. Uh, also, these every one of these I have is the reissue, so I think I bought all these at least twice. But it's got a cool uh, live concert from '93 where they're covering everything on the first five hour albums. It opens with Leprosy, the song, Suicide Machine, Living Monstrosity, Overactive Imagination, Flattening of Emotions Within the Mind, In Human Form, Lack of Comprehension, Trapped in a Corner, and it finishes, finishes with Zombie Ritual. So that's pretty cool to have included on here. So number three, awesome album, 1993's Individual Thought Patterns. Okay, number two, from 1995, Symbolic. That's what we're listening to right now. Um, listen to how just evolved Chuck's songwriting has become at this point. It's just straight up prog. Um, I think this song is Crystal Mountain that we're listening to currently, but just the title track is great and catchy. The production on here is just so clean and crystal clear, uh, symbolic, empty words, 1,000 eyes, without judgment, Crystal Mountain, misanthrope, perennial quest, everything on here is great. Every song on here is excellent. Um, I mean, this was pretty much the, I mean, it's my number two, but you can argue this is a, this is a number one album. Um, Gene Hoagland is back on drums, and he's great. Uh, unfortunately, Steve DiGiorgio is not on this. He was on the demos, so he was involved at the beginning of this album process, but he wasn't on the recording, so you've got, I think it was uh, Kelly Conlon on bass, and Barry Copley on the other guitar. Anyway, two guys I've never heard of before are on this, so yet another unique lineup to this one. Uh, with Gene being the only carryover, but just an absolute gem of an album. I think this this was the only one on Roadrunner, and uh, it feels like, you know, the only reason I rank The Sound of Perseverance number seven was because it feels like everything Death had to say was pretty much said on their first six albums. I feel like this kind of summed up, this is a great high note to go out on for the band. Um, the fact that three years later they did one more album was fine, but I didn't, I ranked it number seven because I don't feel like they really tackled a ton of new ground on that final album. Um, 
but on this album, I just feel like they've they've reached their they've reached their heights uh, with this one. So at number two, absolute classic, symbolic. And so, as you may imagine, by process of elimination, of the number one pick, uh, 1991, Human. So this is where I got on board with the band. I saw the video for Lack of Comprehension on MTV's Headbangers Ball and was absolutely just stunned. That was right around the time where I was into, you know, Testament, and Slayer, and all the thrash. I was well-versed in thrash, and I was familiar with Sepultura and Creator, but... You know, there were these bands that were popping up, like Napalm Death and, you know, Death and Obituary and a few others. And I just remember seeing this video, and Chuck was just so... He had such conviction delivery, but he was his guitar playing was so serious and technical. And his supporting cast, the drums, I'd never seen drum double bass played so fast and so technical. And you've got, you know, you've got Cynic. So you've got Steve DiGiorgio on bass on this. Although he's buried, he's the bass player on this one. And you've got Cynic, you've got Sean Reinhardt of Cynic on drums just blowing me away with his jazz fusion death metal style. Same thing with Paul Masvidal as the other lead guitar player. He's playing these just crazy fusion-y technical solos that are dropping in with arguably their heaviest, sonically their heaviest album. And Chuck's voice is great on this. You know, another production at Morris Sound with Scotty Burns and just every song on here is great. Flattening of Emotions, Suicide Machine, Together as One, Secret Face, Lack of Comprehension, See Through Dreams, Cosmic Sea, the Instrumental, Vacant Planets. Uh, mine has a bonus track of a Kiss cover, uh, God of Thunder, but just the jump they made. They didn't make a bigger jump from album to album than they did right here. Going from spiritual healing to this one was just a monstrous jump. Um... You know, in 1991, I have a, another podcast where I, I just go into 1991 death metal. And this has got to be the top top one, top three albums of, of the entire genre. Certainly top five, for sure. But just everything on here is great. It's so sophisticated, too. It's so heavy and technical, yet just so creative and, and well thought out. And just what a, this is probably my favorite lineup. It was this lineup with Steve DiGiorgio and the two guys from Cynic. And when I tell you I love Cynic to this day, a lot of the reason I love Cynic isn't even for any of the music Cynic did, but, but, but what Sean and Paul did on this album. Um, so just an absolute classic. I love this album. Death is one of my... Chuck is one of my all-time musical heroes, idols, you know, influences, whatever you want to call it. I even have a Marshall Valve estate I still have. I got it because he was using it back in the day. And that, when I bought my first amp, I was like, well, what's Chuck using? So, so coming in at number one, the classic human from 1991. Uh, so real quickly to recap, uh, number seven, you've got The Sound of Perseverance, their final album. Uh, number six, you have their first album from 87, Scream Bloody Gore, classic. Uh, number five, their second album from 88, Leprosy, another classic. Uh, number four from 1990, their third album, Spiritual Healing, Overlook, classic. Um, at number three, their fifth album from 1993, Individual Thought Patterns, classic. Uh, number two, their sixth album from 1995, Symbolic, another classic. And then at number one, their fourth album, right in the middle of their discography from 1991 human so that is ranking the albums of death um, the only other thing I have for like you know just to show a few other things the only other thing I could find that I have is this old cassette called fate it's like the best of for the longest time I did not have scream bloody gore or leprosy I just had spiritual healing through symbolic ultimately so I really just had those four albums but during that time I did have this one cassette and it was cool because it contained three songs from um, Scream Bloody Gore and three songs from Leprosy. So at least I was somewhat familiar with those albums and certainly knew the sound. So it's got, you know, Zombie Ritual, Open Casket, Mutilation, Baptized in Blood, Left to Die, and Pull the Plug. So I, this, even though I had four of the songs already, uh, this cassette was pretty handy to uh, kind of get familiar with those first two classics from the 80s. So... I always dug having this uh, this cassette. It was always valuable to me to go with the uh, with the rest of the uh, 
the stuff I had. So, so there you have it. That is ranking uh, the discography of the legendary band Death and just my hero Chuck Schuldiner. Um, so there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned maybe one or two things, and hopefully you found it fairly entertaining and interesting. But uh, um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.